Yo, what's good, YTBC? What's good, YTBC? Boxing heads and fight fans around the world. Be Marsh back at it with another video. Got a big fight coming up this weekend. Sergey Kovalev versus Andre Ward for uh, Andre Ward's three titles. You know what I mean? He's WBA, WBO, and IBF strap at light heavyweight. Now, you know, this video, video the reason I'm making this video, man, we're going to call this the Rocky Road to Undisputed, you know, because... Um, there's a lot of fighters in right now, man, who um, who are unified champs. You know what I mean? A lot of fighters right now who um, you know, could be trying to get their legacy popping right now if they try to get these undisputed fights. You know what I mean? You know, and um, first and foremost, the closest fight we got right now, the undisputed, is guys like Sergey Kovalev. I'm sorry, Andre Ward. You know, Andre Ward holds three belts, like I just said. And you see him there. He gets to fight Kovalev, who's below him. But then we also have the lineal champ, you know what I mean? Um, Adonis Stevenson, who's the lineal champ and the WBC champ. You know, so uh, how rocky will this road be? You know what I mean? It depends. We might have some network issues. We might have some um, politics, you know what I mean? You know, the boxing politics that... Um, usually deprives us of uh, these these kind of fights, you know what I mean? Or trying to get an undisputed, you know? You know what I'm saying? Well, the winner of Kovalev Ward, only thing they got left to do really basically is fight Adonis Stevenson, you know what I mean? Adonis Stevenson just came off a big win, knocked out, uh, uh, you know, n not as big as it's going to be like a, like a, like a pay-per-view like Andre Ward versus Kovalev. But the way he did it, it was in spectacular fashion how he got rid of Andres Fonfara, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Andres Fonfara was even looking like he was kind of grateful and thankful that his corner stopped the fight. Because, you know, he was, he was about to get separated from his senses. And, and you know, uh, you know, I've mentioned on previous videos, I don't need to see that, man. I mean, you know, I, I'd like to see a fighter fight for another day, just like Kell Brook, you know what I'm saying? Kell Brook took his eight count, took his knee, you know what I'm saying? Did he quit? Yes. You know, am I mad at him? Not at all, man. Not at all. I mean, if the guy thought he could take any more punishment or even thought he had a chance to um, weather that storm, which is Errol Spence, and, you know, eventually, you know, turn the tides and knock him out, he would have continued. But he, uh, he, he saw absolutely no way he could get um, Errol Spence up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the momentum changed. You know what I'm saying? The momentum started changing from round seven. So, you know, a guy like Andre Ward, if he does so happen to win, or Sergey, or Sergey Kovalev, there's going to be some promotional um, conflict in the way. But, you know, I think it's something that um, the network should be willing to work with each other and just trying to have a one unified champion, you know what I mean? Undisputed. With Adonis Stevenson being on Showtime, Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev being on the HBO side, that's where the difficulty of making this fight might happen, you know. And that's what um main events will probably run with if Sergey Kovalev does w beat Andre Ward. They're going to run with the notion that, uh, you know, we fight on HBO, we got a contract on HBO, and we can't go nowhere else, you know what I mean? Will Al Heyman be willing to put up Adonis Stevenson, you know, and let him fight on HBO the way da Danny Jacobs went over there and fought Golovkin, you know what I mean? Or Felix Diaz went over there and Car and John Molina went over to HBO from Showtime PBC to fight Terrence Crawford, you know what I mean? That's going to be, um, you know, the obstacle and the barrier right there, the networks, you know? But really and truly, if these promoters want to see that fight happen... Um, I don't think that, you know, the the, the network should, uh, shouldn't, um, they shouldn't deter this fight, you know what I mean? The fight should, they should still try to make the fight happen to find out who's the best, you know what I'm saying? Um, Adonis Stevenson was asked at his last fight about um, who he wants to fight next and whatnot, and Adonis Stevenson basically said, basically, in, in I'm paraphrasing, but he's basically like the king of the hill. He don't got to call nobody out. People got to come chase him. And, you know, if you really watch that video closely, man, it looks like these are words he was being told by the man Sam Watson. Sam, Sam Watson was right next to him, 
and you can see Sam Sam Watson kind of murmuring stuff, you know, mumbling, saying something to Adonis Stevenson, and Adonis Stevenson was kind of repeating it, you know. And what's the reason for that? I don't know, man. It's Sam, you better ask Sam Watson. He's a better man to answer that question. But um, it kind of still leaves a lot of room for, you know, you know what I'm saying? A lot of room to decide, like, what is um, Adonis Stevenson up to, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to calm nobody out. It was apparent that um, Sam Watson was trying to tell him, you know, what to say. And I know Adonis Stevenson, just about a week or two ago, he did say he wants the winner of Kovalev Award, you know what I mean? This was before his fight, actually, you know? You know what I'm saying? So it's not like he's not been vocal about taking these fighters, you know what I mean? You see what he did when he jumped in the ring um, with Gene Pascal and um, Sergey Kovalev after they fight, you know what I'm saying? You know, he let it be known that he wants Kovalev. He said he's the real champion, but he had the Dapper Dan suit. He was looking fresh, you know what I'm saying? The man came in there and, you know, he basically told Kovalev that he wants to fight, you know what I'm saying? But Kovalev um, basically ain't even want to talk to him. So, you know, a lot of people criticize Stevenson for that. But when Tyson Fury did it against the dynasty, I'm sorry, against um, um, the guy from Alabama, Deontay Wilder, uh, you know, at the Barclays, when uh, Deontay Wilder sparked out Spilka, nobody said that um, uh, Tyson Fury was acting or he was um, he's faking or whatever. Everybody applauded him for that, including me. So it's the difference with Stevenson, you know. So, you know, for this fight to happen, I know guys are going to have mandatories, you know what I mean? From what I know, mandatories trump, uh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, undisputed or unifications trump mandatories. So, you know, Adonis Stevenson and Ward, really and truly, it's up to them. It's going to be up to Ward, too. It's going to be up to the winner of Ward and Kovalev. Will that will whoever wins that fight will they be willing to go right right away, and fight uh, Adonis Stevenson? Because Adonis Stevenson, will, he, I'm sure he gonna put up, he gonna get, he he'll he'll give Alidia Alvarez some more step aside money, so he can get that fight with um the winner of Kovalev and Ward. You know what I mean? You check it. Is Ward willing to do that? You know what I'm saying? Or will he fight uh his IBF mandatory? Who will probably be better beef if better beef gets through his opponent? It's a lot of questions to be asked, you know what I mean? But what I'm what we asking for is not um it's not out of the realm of this world, you know, it's not impossible, you know what I mean? If the fighters want this fight, it can happen, you know what I'm saying? You know, if it's gonna be mandatory as these guys wanna fulfill before they take these fights, well, so be it. Adonis Stevenson fought two weeks ago. Ward Kovalev, they're going to fight this weekend. That's just two weeks apart from when they fought. They could fight their mandatories about the same time. After they get through they with their mandatories, they could take this undisputed fight, man. We should have that fight sometime by 2018, you know? Hopefully the first quarter. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of the routes for the undisputed, you know what I mean? And um, another one we got is... uh. Julius Ndongo and, and Terrence Crawford. And from what I've been reading from articles um, I've seen on these boxing websites, that looks looks like that fight is probably going to happen next, you know what I mean? You know, I don't know what Sergey Limpinitz and them talking about. The guy Maurice Hooker, he just pulled out of a card not too long ago. He's injured. So Sergey Limpinitz is going to have to take a chill pill, you know what I mean? He's going to have to fall back. Sit his ass down and watch us get an undisputed. And maybe when he when uh when we find out who wins between Ndongo and uh, Bud, then he can get to fight the winner. And actually there'll be more at stake at the table, you know what I mean? There's gonna be four belts on the line. So you know, if Sergey Limpimitz is such a bad man the way he's acting with his manager, you know, acting like they um you know what I'm saying? Like they, like the IBF owes them, like they, you know, that they owe him the fight against Ndongo. They're going to have to fall back, man, and he's going to have to wait for the undisputed champ, you know what I mean? And actually, the road to that un uh, undisputed title is quite easy, unlike Sergey Kovalev and uh, 
Sir, the widow of Sergei Kovalev Ward and Adonis Stevenson. Adongo is not tied to any network. He's not an HBO nor a Showtime fighter. You know what I mean? He's basically like a free agent. You know what I'm saying? Coming from Namibia. A lot of people who make these videos, they call where Undongo from Nambia. Nambia is not even a real place. That sounds like some Nardia, some of them kind of PlayStation games, them kind of fantasy places. Might as well even call it Zamunda from coming to America, you know what I mean? But the man from Namibia, you know, Namibia's had a good good fighters, man. Guys like um Paulus Moses, Paulus Mbandu. I'm saying they had the man Harry Simon, two division, different division champ. So the man, they got a, they got a, they got a good boxing tradition lately. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think the man Bud will be in a tough fight with the man um, Ndongo. I'm not making no predictions right now, but the road to that undisputed is not quite as rocky as Stevenson versus the winner of Sergey Kovalev Ward. You know what I mean? You check it. What's the other one we got? We got um, tr Triple G. Triple G has to rebel. Sir Billy Joe Saunders has the WBO. You know? So get, I'm sorry. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Triple G. Triple G is caught, caught um, between a rock and a hard place, basically. But, you know, I'm not even mad at him, but I could see where he can get some criticism. All along, he claimed that He's trying to become an undisputed champion. That's what he wants, to get all the belts be undisputed. You know what I'm saying? And that's all well and fine, you know. But he had a shot to fight Billy Joe Saunders this this uh, summer. But he said he's injured, you know what I mean? He pulled out of that fight. That was his shot right there to get that WBO strap, you know what I mean? But, you know, the man decided to go for a fight. And, you know, getting that WBO strap, that would be undisputed, you know. That would be a legacy basically a legacy fight versus Billy Joe Saunders because he would be able to get all four belts, you know what I mean? Or vice versa, Billy Joe Saunders would be able to snatch three belts from, from Triple G. You check it. Um, but you know, that particular fight right there, it didn't happen because the man Triple G got the cannoli fight, you know what I mean? Now, I made a video a while ago when this fight happened and I criticized Triple G like, you know, was he going for the legacy or for the money? But really and truly, a fight with Cannoli is also a legacy fight. Just like Sergey Kovalev versus Ward. These are the type of fights that, you know, the Hall of Fame voters and also us fans, you know what I mean, will say, yeah, them type, those are the type of wins that push you into the Hall of Fame in Canastota, kind of New York. You know what I mean? So, either way, you know what I'm saying, it's a, it's a big fight for Triple G, you know what I mean? And it's not all over, you know. I believe if Triple G beats Cannoli or Cannoli beats Triple G, they should fight Billy Joe Saunders next, you know? Billy, Billy Joe Saunders shouldn't have to relax now because the man Kurt CD sitting in a federal lockup in Brooklyn, you know? Nah, the man Kurt CD, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Billy Joe Saunders should fight the winner of Triple G versus Cannoli immediately, immediately. You, 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 he's held that belt for too long, ain't fought nobody. He lo he lost his last fight, in my opinion, to a guy I've never even heard of. You know what I'm saying? So that should be the fight, man. Cash out, Billy Joe. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's why I said it's not um. You know, it's not all all around bad for the man Triple G. Whether he fought Billy Joe Saunders, whether he'd get them four belts, be undisputed, or beat Cannoli, get that lineal title. You know what I'm saying? Because Cannoli still holds a lineal title. You know what I'm saying? And then he can go for Billy Joe Saunders, you know what I mean? And those are big fights for him right there. So, you know, the undisputed road at once at 160 at 160, at 160 middleweight, it's not quite as rocky, you know what I mean? It's not quite as rocky as the Donna Stevenson and versus the winner of Sergey Kovalev versus w and Ward, you know what I mean? So, you know, um one thing we also got to pay attention to is how the, the, the um, them sanctioning bodies don't force Triple G to do anything. Pay attention to that, the way they put the man and Dungo under pressure, you know what I'm saying? But they never they never um, put the man Triple G to be under pressure to face his mandatories, you know what I mean? You check it. And when he has easy opponents, fellas like Dominique Wade, he's on it. He's on it like Hornet, you know? 
he's not going to hesitate to make that fight, you know what I mean? Bet you they put the man Jamel Charlo, if he does get through the Sebastian Highland character, bet you that fight won't happen at the snap of the finger like a fight like Dominique Wade versus Triple G did. But that's just my opinion, you know, just from watching Triple G over the last few years holding multiple belts, he hasn't been forced to take no mandatories, you know what I mean? And when he did, Dominique Wade, he justified it with, oh, it's my mandatory, I have to do it. It's a fight we didn't want to see, but we wanted to see him fight Lara, you know what I mean? You check it, so. That road's not quite as rocky for Undisputed. Billy Joe Saunders is not tied to any networks in the United States. I'm sure he'd gladly take a fight with Triple G wherever it is it's at, whether Triple G goes to England, whether Triple G has it in his home country, Kazakhstan, or Billy Joe Sanders travels across the pond of the United States. That fight is makeable, so they need to make that happen. All right. What else is next? They need to make that happen for Billy Joe Saunders versus the winner of Cannoli versus Triple G. Another undisputed, but it's not quite as close as all these others I mentioned, is uh, um, Keith Thurman in the, the welterweight division. He has two belts. Errol Spence is ready, willing, and able and wants to make that fight happen with Keith Thurman immediately. So the winner of that has three belts, you know. Back in the day, that, that he'd be undisputed already. Just like Triple G right now, he'd be undisputed up until like 06, you know. When um, you had to have the WBO belt, all four belts to be undisputed, you know. So, um, you know, Errol Spence would like that fight versus Keith Thurman. Whoever wins that fight will have three belts. But we can't call him undisputed up until they face Manny Pacquiao because Manny Pacquiao has a WBO belt, you know what I mean? And also, Doug Manny Pacquiao has a lineal title. He don't got the ring magazine title. That's why I always emphasize and reiterate on, on my channel. The ring magazine and, and um and the, what you call it, ring magazine and the lineal titles, you know, you know, the ring magazine, they, they are, they are kind of a, the same, but they're different in, in a way because, you know, some guys like Manny Pacquiao has the, the, the lineal title, but nobody has the ring magazine, you know what I'm saying, the number one and number two guy at welterweight haven't fought, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, there's no lineal title. I'm sorry, no ring magazine champion. You know what I mean? Adonis Stevenson was the ring magazine champ, just like uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux. But they got stripped of their of the ring magazine titles, but they still are lineal champions. You know what I mean? They're the man who beat the man. There's a lineage. You know what I mean? It goes back. You can follow and trace the steps on, on how far it goes back. You know what I mean? Donaire had it before him, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, and I think Donaire, to get that that belt, I think he had to beat Fernando Montiel, you know what I mean, to get the lineal title, so, you know, the winner of Bud, I'm sorry, T uh, Errol Spence, Keith Thurman has to fight Pacquiao, and Pacquiao has to fight them, them two guys are willing to fight Pacquiao. Now it's up to Pacquiao to see if he's willing to fight anybody on the PBC side. So the road to that is a little rocky because Manny, uh, only way Bob Arum will put Pacquiao in there with Errol Spence and Keith Thurman is if Manny Pacquiao is about to cash out. It's just like his last fight ever in his career. But as long as Manny Pacquiao is still active and uh, he's not trying to put him in there, uh, you know what I mean, because... You know, those guys, you know what I'm saying, it, it won't generate the kind of money that Barbarian would like to cash Manny Pacquiao out. That's why he'd like to fight the man Pacquiao to fight Terrence Crawford because that's an in-house fight. All the money still stays in the top rank house, you know what I mean? So, you know, that road to unification for, um, for the welterweight, it's not as, I'm sorry, undisputed. It's a little rocky, you know, because... Of Bob Arum, you know what I mean? It's because of Bob Arum. We can't say Manny Pacquiao's tied to any network anymore. He's not. He ain't on Showtime nor HBO. So the 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 um the network shouldn't be no problem. You know what I mean? On the real, the network should should actually um embrace this fight, whichever side, whether it's HBO 
or uh, the PBC Showtime. And if I were Manny Pacquiao, I'd go over there to Showtime in PBC, like how he did against Shane Mosley. That was a that, that fight was on Showtime. You know what I mean? So that road, road to undisputed is a, a little rocky, but it's not impossible to make. You know what I mean? Now the next one we have is um, the heavyweight scene. Deontay Wilder has WBC. The guy Parker has Joseph Parker has the WBO, and Anthony Joshua has two straps. There's a lot of fights to be made at the fucking heavyweight division. All these undefeated fighters. I can't even forget about Tyson Fury, who ultimately still has the lineal title. Ring Magazine and the lineal title, you know? It's kind of like Joe Frazier, you know what I'm saying? Joe Frazier when he beat um, uh, Jimmy Ellis, you know what I'm saying? You know, he now he has two belts, WBC, WBA. But he ain't got the lineal title because that's still with Muhammad Ali. And the, the, the fans still think... Muhammad Ali is still the real champ, you know what I mean? So, you know, Tyson Fury still is, has to be in the mix, you know? So let's start with Wilder. Wilder says, I read an article where he said he's, he has some big news, big announcement coming up. In my opinion, I think it's going to be, uh, I don't know, shit, man, because I just also read that Huey Fury and, and fucking Joseph Parker are going to fight this summer. I was thinking before I did read about Huey Fury and Joseph Parker still about a fight, I thought that the man, the undisputed, no, excuse, excuse me, unification would trump that remains to Vern mandatory and Wilder would be fighting Joseph Parker. So boom, he'd have two belts. A lot of people on YouTube, boxing videos, the fans, a lot of people from England, a lot of people who are actually Anthony w Joshua fans are actually saying that Wilder needs to do more. He needs to fight somebody before he gets a he gets a, a fucking AJ fight. And I'm just going to keep it real. I'm going to be blunt. That kind of mentality is basically protecting Anthony Joshua. Why the fuck Wilder got to do anything? Wilder got a strap. He got a WBC belt. Why wouldn't a guy like Anthony Joshua want to go get that green belt? Why does Wilder have to do anything extra? He's a, he's a champion. He don't got to get no big win as far as... Oh, he got to, people say he got to go get Ortiz. But Ortiz is, is Joshua's mandatory. Why y'all forgetting all about that? Why are you just basically glossing over the fact that the mandatory to, for Joshua in the WBA is Ortiz? So those are problems Joshua needs to handle. You know what I'm saying? So as far as Wilder and AJ, Wilder don't got to do nothing because he has a bargaining chip. He has a WBC strap, okay? And if people are going to say, no, he don't need to fight him, he needs to do more, they're protecting AJ. Why? Because there's a possibly, possibility he could get knocked out and vice versa too, Wilder, but there's a possibility he could get knocked out and the reward might not be as high as Anthony Joshua versus Klitschko, but a real champion should be willing to unify and try to get more belts. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it should be, you know? Like O'Neal Bell versus Mermek. Jin, Jin Mormek, you know what I'm saying? Cruiserweight, for undisputed, you know what I'm saying? The, you know, w w what does um, Mormek look like? He had the two straps, WBA, WBA and WBC. What he look like saying, I don't need to fight that guy, fucking O'Neal Bell. He needs to do more. No, Jin Mormek took the fight. He has an IBF strap, and I want that. He lost the fight to, to, to O'Neal Bell, but... Hey man, he wanted to he wanted to be undisputed. So a guy like Anthony Joshua, yo, don't listen to none of them fans who say yo that Wilder needs to prove himself to fight you. No, Wilder has something you need to become great. Even Lennox Lewis had that green belt. You know what I mean? So Wilder needs to face his mandatory if he's not gonna get a Joseph Parker fight, and then. He can fight the winner of Vladimir Klitschko, and um, or 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 then he can go out after he gets beats Bermain. He can get Anthony. I'm sorry, um, the WBO guy Joseph Parker. You know what I mean? And now he has two belts. What the what the Anthony Joshua fans gonna say now? Is that gonna be enough? Will he have proved himself to get a fight against Joshua? Joshua's not um, you know, he's not um, the king of boxing. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's not like people have to earn their shot to fight him, especially another champion who has a strap. No, it don't work like that. You check it. So Anthony Joshua got mandatory problems, Pulev and, and Ortiz. <sighs> don't think Ortiz is going to sit back or Pulev after this Anthony Joshua versus Klitschko rematch. I don't think they're going to sit back and wait and just uh, watch Anthony Joshua not try to get a unification for Undisputed with uh, Wilder. If Wilder has two belts, if he beats, um, what's his name, Joseph Parker, you know? So, wh what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Anthony Joshua's going to have to face Pulev and, and Ortiz before he fights. What's his name? Deontay Wilder. You know what I'm saying? I know unifications and undisputed Trump mandatories, but I don't think this guy, Joseph Ortiz, he's threatened to take the litigation. So I just I just don't see Anthony Joshua fighting Wilder before he, he handles at least one of those mandatories. You know what I mean? I just don't see it, you know? So that road to unification, uh, to undisputed in the heavyweight division, it's gonna be it's gonna be rocky. It's gonna be rocky. And it shouldn't be because Wilder and Joshua both are showtime guys, you know what I mean? They both fight on the showtime side in the USA. You check it so that one's gonna be rocky and it's gonna be an extended period of time. I'm talking about like twenty eighteen. So before we, we even get close to seeing a unific unification with for undisputed with Anthony Joshua and the winner of a, of a Wilder and Joseph Parker fight, you know what I mean? So, you know, the closest one right now we have to make is Ndongo and Crawford. I think that will be made soon. No network issues in that. And I also think the winner of Cannoli and Triple G, I think they're going to fight Billy Joe Saunders, you know what I mean? So that won't be hard to make. The heavyweight division, light heavyweight division, and welterweight division... There's going to be problems in them divisions trying to get undisputed, you know what I mean? But, you know, this is a video I just had to do one time, you know what I mean? The Rocky Road to the um, Undisputed title, you know what I'm saying? Well, will it happen? When will we see an undisputed champ, you know what I mean? I think we will sooner than later with the winner of Bud Crawford versus Ndongo. But ultimately, we'd like to see more, you know what I mean? Let me know in the comment section what y'all think. I'm sorry I don't go on. This video is probably the longest video I've ever done in my YouTube but history you know what i mean but um there was a lot to talk about a lot of issues to tackle and um the road to undisputed you know uh what's the guy's name boxing wave i remember he made a video not too long ago said it's impossible i don't uh, it's basically impossible right now to become an undisputed champ i don't think it is in my opinion i just think if the fighters and the promoters want to make it happen the sanctioning bodies already you could already trump them with the undisputed and unifications trump mandatories so that shouldn't get in the way you know what i mean even though i do know that the sanction bodies would they, they do like to get involved and um try to get their hands in these boxes pockets but um if the fighters want it managers and promoters want it fellas think they can fight guys then they could make it happen you know joe calzaghi was an undisputed guy 168 he i uh, i don't know if he i don't think he held all four titles at the same time because, uh, no, he didn't. Because he dropped the IBF strap when he beat Jeff Lacey. He was a long-time WBO champ. He beat Jeff Lacey, but he dropped it. And then he went and beat Kessler uh, for Kessler, who, who had two straps, WBC and w, WBA. And that's how he became undisputed. Just like Prince Nassim, he was undisputed at featherweight, but he never held all them titles simultaneously. You know what I mean? Like at the same damn time. You check it, but he did beat any and every champion in the division. So, and he held all them belts just like Kostya Zhu. You know what I mean? Kostya Zhu beat uh, Hesar Soto for the WBC joint. He beat Shambe Mitchell for the for the um. And this is at 140. He beat Shambe Mitchell for WBA. Then he beat Zab Judah for the IBF. And he had all three of them straps, but then he dropped two of them. Uh, WBA and the WBC and he remained with the IBF because he was more loyal to them and he got taken away by the man and the lineal title by the man Ricky Hatton. B Marsh Boxing just another little boxing video the road to Undisputed basically like a little 
something do you know to think about will we see an undisputed fight soon let me know in the comment section be marsh boxing ghost